Hello and welcome to the third lecture of this overview section in this course on practical approach to investing your personal finances. So in this module, what we had aimed was to give you an overview of a practical approach to help you decide where to invest your hard-earned money to maximize your returns. And uh, so far, what we have done is we have talked about what is, how do you measure returns? How do you, what do we mean by maximizing returns? And what are the various approaches that are out there for investing in your personal finances? In this lecture, we'll talk about what are the pros and cons of these numerous approaches. And then we will propose a practical approach that you can use for maximizing returns on your personal finances, right? So what do you think are the pros and cons of those uh, numerous approaches? We talked about the fundamental approach where you uh, basically you determine the intrinsic value of the asset or the security. Psychological approach where you go by the mood of the public. The academic approach which requires uh, a lot of mathematical use of the spreadsheets and there is an eclectic approach which promises amalgamation of all the three but doesn't show anything uh, concrete for to use. So what are the pros and cons of these numerous approaches? So summarizing here in one sheet, basically these uh, uh, some of these are very primarily focused on stock investing because uh, specifically, let's say fundamental analysis, technical analysis. These are the approaches that typically use in stock investing. They cannot be used for uh, investing in mutual funds. They cannot be used in deciding this asset allocation, as you will see later on. And it requires a lot of use of spreadsheets to calculate the values of the stock and securities. And that requires a lot of patience as well as a lot of hard work and a lot of time. It, uh, uh, one of the fundamental flaws with these approaches is that they completely uh, ignore uh, the importance of right asset allocation. Right, alloc right asset allocation accounts for maybe, I would say, 80% of the returns that you can get. Balance 20% is about figuring out the right thing within the assets. So from time to time, if you can manage the right asset allocation, which is completely missed by these approaches. Also, it complete, these approaches completely miss. They think the world is static. Whereas uh, the time moves on, the interest rate, which is 4%, becomes 8%. And you need to rebalance your portfolio, decide where to invest less, where to invest more, which asset class to go for now, which to exit. So they completely ignore the need to rebalance portfolio. And also they ignore the fact that the risk profile of the investor determines what is the maximized return for him or her. So there is no uniformly uh, uh, one way to say this is the maximized return. Now, it entirely depends on the risk profile. If your risk profile is low, you could maximize, depending on, you could earn maximum interest rate around interest rate of, in your country. And if you are on the high side of the risk, then you could earn interest rate plus seven, eight percent. That would be the kind of guiding I would have for you. So these are the various pros and cons for these numerous approaches. So let's look at the practical approach to invest wisely your finances and maximize return. So is there an approach that doesn't that is uh, uh, that doesn't require the kind of uh, rigor required uh, in terms of calculations, mathematics, of spreadsheets, intuition, and is, is still systematic and can use uh, the work done by a lot of other people to figure out what is the right places for you to invest and how to maximize return. So let's look at that approach. So I have this approach in front of you laid out. It's a seven step approach. Uh, uh, so you need to begin by first understanding the different asset classes uh, of the financial assets that are available. And we talked about many of that. So in your country specifically, because this is a global course. So you need to understand in each of your countries, what are the different asset classes available and what kind of return they give as you see the second step and what are the differences between this? What are the differences in terms of the risks that you need to take? What is the likelihood of your capital being uh, washed away? And what are the kind of returns that your country or the environment permits it? So that is the second step. And uh, that also talks about the third step of specifically what are the absolute returns that has been provided? What are the kind of risks that is being taken by that? So the first three, you need to basically understand the different asset classes. What are the difference between these and what are the risk and returns? So you have a good understanding of the options available 
and the potential returns as well as the kind of risk that you need to take. Having understood the, your, the marketplace so as to say in terms of the various financial asset classes and instruments available, then you need to determine the fourth step. What is your risk profile? So are you a low risk? Are you a medium risk? Are you an aggressive risk? So where do you stand on your risk? And your risk will determine whether you're comfortable with your portfolio. Your comfort is of extremely importance because if you are a low risk profile and you take on a portfolio of an aggressive risk taker, you will always be worried about and you, you will get upset by the movements in the uh, your portfolio's value over a period of time. Whereas if you are an aggressive risk taker and you understand the market variations will happen over a period of time and it is in the long term and you need to make use of those downsides when they happen and make use of the upsides, you will be comfortable with that. So first you need to determine your risk profile. Then in the fifth step, you need to de determine the asset allocation for your portfolio. So if you are a low risk profile, what should be your asset allocation? Should you be investing 80% of funds in fixed asset classes, only 20% in, in the, in the uh, high risk category? Or should you be doing 50-50? So you need to determine your asset allocation. So and within that as asset allocation, what are the specific uh, asset classes that you would do that? Once you have determined the asset allocations uh, and determined the values or percentages of your asset that you would invest in these different asset allocations, then you need to find the right instruments in each asset class. Now, within each asset, there could be many options that's available to you in each your country. If you're going to invest in a debt funds, there are a plethora of debts what's available. So how do you decide which debt fund to interest to invest in? And we will talk about how you can you find those ones here. Having built a portfolio that you think will deliver, uh, that's a still a hope and a strategy, a strategic hope. You've done a lot of analysis. You would have figured out. You would have expected these portfolio to deliver your expected return, uh, what which will be near the maximization. But what you need to do is after a certain period of time, three, three months minimum and definitely a year, you need to see what kind of returns are you generating. Are, are you satisfied? Are these as per the potential of these asset classes? Is your overall risk uh, uh, profile uh, satisfied with the kind of returns that you give? And if yes and no, then you need to rebalance your portfolio. You need to move things within the asset classes based on what has changed in the environment. And within the asset class, are there is your financial instrument or the scheme that you invest in? Is it to be changed? Is it performing well? Is the risk increased? Is the return lower? And accordingly, they need to rebalance your portfolio at least once a year. So that's how you go about looking at your investment of your finances in a practical way. So what do we do in the next module? So the next module, we will start talking about understanding the different asset classes, uh, different financial assets that are available to you. We had briefly mentioned to you, we will spend a great deal of time in helping you understand what are these different asset classes. And this is very important for you because an understanding of the financial assets and the market is critical for you to invest in the right places and uh, maximize the returns. So thank you so much for watching this third and last lecture of this o section on overview. I hope you have got a good understanding of an overview of this practical approach of in, uh, investing your personal finances to maximize your returns. And I... Uh, Hope you're beginning to enjoy it as well. So I do look forward to see you again in the next uh, section and the lectures.